Life Church created this podcast because we all need healthy conversations with real people. So this podcast is here to help you start real conversations with your life group, friends, and family. Now, on to the show. Hey friends, it's Abigail, and I am so excited for you to hear today's conversation with Life Church's newest global mission partner, A21. Before we jump in, we do have a quick disclaimer for those of you who might be listening around children. This episode might not be suitable for younger kids, but once you listen to the episode, you could start a conversation with your kids and help them grow their understanding of justice by asking questions like, what can we do if we see someone being mistreated? Or how can we stand up for what's right? We'll also have some great resources for you in the conversation guide, which is always in the show notes. Well, welcome to the You've Heard It Said podcast. This is Allie. And this is Austin. That's right. And you might remember Austin from one of our previous episodes where we talked about Life Church's global mission strategy. And you also might remember that Austin is my actual life group leader. So we're just <laughs> having life group on the podcast today, which is super fun. So the reason that we invited Austin back today is because we have some more exciting things about our global mission strategy. And I wondered if you could share a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. So we have some really exciting news that we've just been itching to share with everyone. And now it's finally official. So even since the last podcast episode that we recorded, we can now officially share this news, which is we are now partnered with an organization called A21, and they are one of the leading organizations in the fight against human trafficking. That's awesome. So what was the catalyst for that partnership? Yeah, so as we've learned just about how extensive the issue of trafficking is, I mean, there are millions of people around the world being trafficked right now, and tragically, one in four of those victims is a child. Hmm. We also learned that it's not just overseas, but it's also right here in the United States. Simultaneously, we're learning that our church just has a strong passion for the issue of human trafficking, and people want to get involved. So that really led us to start asking the question, Who's already out there doing this work? Who has the expertise? Who has the experience in collaborating with law enforcement to rescue people who are being trafficked right Mm -hmm. now and also providing really awesome, holistic, trauma-informed aftercare for survivors? So we went through the vetting process that we talked through in the last Mm -hmm. uh, episode with you all, and A21 really just rose to the top. So we have announced this to our church recently, and I'm excited to share it here too. Yeah. So as you think about this new partnership— What are your hopes for how this might impact our church? Yeah. Trafficking can really seem like such a massive issue. And I think it's easy for us all to wonder if we can really make a difference. And what I love about A21 is that they do an amazing job of helping people see how they can be part of the solution. And it's Mm. really going to take all of us. So they do Mm. a great job of mobilizing people together to say, what can I do in my community with the people that I'm around every day to help be the solution to this problem? Yeah. And that really brings us to our big question today, which is, what can we do? to help victims of human trafficking. So to help us answer this question, our friend Audra sat down with Kristen, who leads A21's work in Cambodia. And she found out more about the work that they're doing there and how we can get involved. Hello, Kristen. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we're a 13-hour time difference. You are in Cambodia and we are in the United States. So thank you so much for being on the You've Heard It Said podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about the opportunity to connect again. Yeah, I want to just start by asking you about your story. So you work for an organization called A21, which stands for Abolishing Slavery in the 21st Century. So how did you first become aware of human trafficking and how did you get involved in A21? Yeah, that's a really good question. So my journey actually started in Canada, where I'm from. I was at a social justice conference where somebody presented about human trafficking. And I remember sitting at that conference being so overwhelmed because I was hearing about this global issue for the first time in my life. And I couldn't believe that such a horrible thing was happening. And I knew so little about it. Mm -hmm. After leaving that conference, I started doing my own research, reading books, watching movies. I was just really intrigued and wanted to really understand what is human trafficking? Where is it happening? Is there anything I can do to help end it. I reached out to organizations in Canada that were running small projects. I just got involved anywhere I could on the side, volunteering, 
helping to fundraise. And through that, I had an opportunity to visit Thailand and Cambodia and to learn a bit more about what organizations in Southeast Asia were doing and also to dive a bit deeper into the problem in Asia with human trafficking. And that first trip to Cambodia in 2012, I left so heartbroken. Mm. I remember meeting young street children who were under the age of 10, being forced to beg, being sexually exploited, going to brothel areas and red light districts and just feeling so helpless, walking the streets, seeing this issue for the first time, like really in in front of me, not just in a book or in a movie. I, I was there and I was seeing this and I was hearing from people who are working on the ground and organizations that were just addressing some of the real issues that they were faced. And I went back to Canada and I honestly just cried mm. for days and really prayed like, God, like my heart is so broken for this issue. I can't just go back to a, a nine to five job. And so I continued living in Canada for a while, but kept coming back to Cambodia and just volunteering for a couple months, just raising money, coming to Cambodia and giving. And I really fell in love with the country, not just for the heartbreak of human trafficking, but I also just, the people in Cambodia are so beautiful and it's mm. such an incredible country. And yeah, my, uh, it just felt like a second home. And so I kept coming back to Cambodia multiple times, working in Canada. And I started to volunteer a bit more long term with some organizations on ground. And through that, I got connected with A21, a program I was working with on the border of Cambodia and Thailand, working with vulnerable children. They actually ended up having to close and relocate their operations. And I was pretty devastated about that because I'd grown Mm. quite attached to the children and also felt that's where I was supposed to be. And that caused me to leave Cambodia for a season. And I was away. I found out from A21, we have a child advocacy center in Pattaya, Thailand, and they had been rescuing quite a few children from Cambodia at that time. And a group of the children were actually from the area that I was originally working and bittersweet emotions, um, incredibly grateful that they were rescued and they were supported, but also just feeling, again, overwhelmed and burdened with, I just, I really want to be more involved. Mm -hmm. And through my relationship with A21, they were growing and take for the number of Cambodian cases they were rescuing in Thailand, just due to the vulnerability, especially of children on the border. And they had a position open to help develop the operations in Cambodia. And I went for it and I got it. And I've now been working with A21 for five years based in Cambodia. Wow, that's amazing. So what kind of work do you do for A21 in Cambodia? So I'm honored to play the role as country manager in Cambodia, where I get to work with an incredible team of Khmer social workers, legal professionals, psychologists, reach specialists, and a rescue team. With A21, we have three main programs, which are contextualized to every country that we work with. The first program is called REACH, which is education, prevention, and awareness with the aim of reducing vulnerability by educating the community about the risks of human trafficking, how to report it. In Cambodia, we are working predominantly with child survivors of human trafficking. So a large percentage of our prevention programs in Cambodia are actually targeted towards primary age children or children living in vulnerable communities. Our second program is called Rescue, where we work very closely with the police and government to identify potential victims of human trafficking, both children, adults, men, and female, remove them from their place of exploitation, and seek justice through our legal programs so that we can ensure that perpetrators are actually being arrested and traffickers can no longer take advantage of vulnerable people. We also provide professional trainings for frontline professionals. This includes victim identification training, trauma-informed care, and child-friendly interviewing. Our third program is called Restore, which focuses on a community-based aftercare program for survivors of human trafficking. Over 55% of the children rescued in our program in Thailand were actually Cambodian nationals, children. Mm -hmm. And we were working with the government to repatriate them back to Cambodia. But what we found was that if they were not receiving immediate aftercare services, the majority of them were just returning back to Thailand or returning to a place where they were again vulnerable or re-trafficked. And so it is so important for us after an individual is rescued and removed from their place of exploitation 
that they receive immediate aftercare services and attention. And in Cambodia, as I mentioned, we have an incredible team of social workers, psychologists, and counselors who are readily available to work with survivors, both children and adults, to recover from their past trauma, reintegrate into the community, and to have access to the services that they need to become independent. I want to go back to something that you said. You said that human trafficking is a global issue. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Human trafficking looks different in every country. Here in Cambodia, we see people of all backgrounds, ages, demographics, genders, and traffic for forced begging, forced labor, sex trafficking, domestic servitude, marriage, online sexual exploitation. But it's really important for people to know that human trafficking is not just happening in Cambodia. It is literally happening in every single country all around the world. It's also known as modern day slavery and traffickers exploit and profit at the expense of vulnerable adults and children through various things, sex, labor, other means by force, fraud and coercion. Wow. Kristen, in what ways does human trafficking look different in Cambodia than it would in the United States? Yeah, that's a good question. And I'm honestly not an expert about human trafficking in the U.S., but I can say that it does look different in every country. But there are similar things like human trafficking, both in the U.S. and Cambodia, can involve people from all different backgrounds, ages, demographics, genders. In the U.S., I know that the government recognizes two primary forms of human trafficking, which includes forced labor and sex trafficking. And traffickers compel victims in the U.S. to engage in maybe different forms in Cambodia, but some might be similar, forcing people to work in commercial sex, forcing people to work in both legal and illicit industries and sectors. This can include hospitality, construction, factories, massage parlors, salon services, domestic work, and even drug smuggling. I wanted to ask, can you describe for us what it looks like when someone enters the care of A21? Yeah, that's a really good question. So when a victim of human trafficking is rescued, it honestly, it really is just the first step. There is a long journey of recovery that comes after that, which is where A21 aftercare program is able to support with. We provide survivors of human trafficking with accommodation for adult survivors. This can be apartments or reintegration into the community. For child survivors who are not able to return to their homes or to their family, this can include foster care programs that they are raised in family-based safe care. We also provide education, vocational training, sponsorship, psychological, medical, dental support, as well as a series of life skills programs, job placement, and small business sponsorship with the goal of helping survivors recover from their past trauma and sustainably reintegrate back into their home community. That's awesome. Mm. Could you give us like Mm -hmm. a crash course in human trafficking awareness? What do you think everyone should know about human trafficking? As I mentioned, it's important to understand that there's not one specific type of person that becomes like a victim. Individuals become vulnerable to human trafficking and exploitation when they are exposed to risk factors such as instability, violence, abuse, poor education, substance misuse, homelessness, unemployment, isolation. These types of factors can weaken somebody's defense measures to make them more susceptible to human trafficking and exploitation. Victimization often occurs when somebody is coerced, deceived, forced, or otherwise subject to an abuse of power. This can look like false job opportunities or being even sold by a family member into labor or sex trafficking. When a survivor exits a trafficking situation, the resulting trauma combined with the original unresolved risk factors can cause a likelihood for somebody to actually be re-exploited. And then the cycle of trafficking just continues, which is why it's so important to ensure that survivors have access to proper aftercare services and support after being identified. Can you talk a little bit about if I were a parent, how Mm -hmm. would I help my child understand? Like what would be like a crash course, but on a child or teenager level? Yeah, A21 has actually developed a series of curriculums, prevention programs, awareness campaigns, and a lot of research and development has gone into developing these programs specifically for primary age children. Mm -hmm. These resources are all available on the A21 website for free. And they're also available in different 
languages. I would encourage everybody listening to this to visit a21.org slash education to gain access to these resources that can help you and your children better understand, identify, and reduce the risks of human trafficking. That's awesome. That's really cool that you guys have all of those. Now that you've given us a crash course in awareness, if I'm just becoming aware or if I'm someone who's been interested for a while, but I don't work at A21 and I don't currently serve anywhere, what is something that I could do to get started? Yeah, there's a few different ways. Similar to, like I said, when I first heard about human trafficking and wanted to understand it better is to ultimately educate yourself about human trafficking so that you know how to identify it and report it. And that can be initially going to the A21 website and downloading all of these resources. But even go further than that, explore what movies, what books are available. Try to understand what is actually happening in your specific community. What are trafficking trends in your area, in your country, or the countries that you are traveling to? Another way is to mobilize your community. You should engage your network to raise awareness about human trafficking. And by educating your community, you also empower people that you engage with on a daily basis to prevent it from happening in the first place, but also help to identify it and keep the conversation going. Another option is to volunteer. A21 has offices all around the world that need volunteers, but there are also a lot of other local organizations who need support. And I would, again, just encourage everybody listening to this is find out what trusted anti-human trafficking organizations are in your area and see what are their needs and how you can specifically get involved. That's awesome. I know whenever I was starting to research this issue for myself, one of the things they talked about in my area is that the people at nail salons might be victims to forced labor. And when I first heard that, I actually had a nail appointment for the same week. I remember almost just getting cold and thinking, oh my gosh, what if I have been like unknowingly supporting human trafficking through the nail salon that I go to? But it was just a good reminder for me to really think a little bit more critically about the things that I do and the places that I go every day. And also just to ask more questions about where I'm going and the businesses I'm supporting and things like that. So if you are somewhere where you're thinking this person that's in front of me might be a victim of human trafficking. Like, How can we be curious in a way that would lead us to the right answers or would, could potentially lead us to helping someone who is in need of our help? Yeah, there are common signs that someone might be caught up in trafficking. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, these can look differently. But I also, I'll, I'll name a few signs, but just because you see the signs, it also doesn't mean that a person is 100% a victim of human trafficking, but at least yeah. to be aware of what are common scenarios or common things to look out for. Uh, The first one could be controlled by another person. Oftentimes we see victims of human trafficking be accompanied or controlled by a person where the other person will not let them speak or even the individual would defer to that person to answer questions or to respond. Mm -hmm. Another one is lack of money, lack of earnings. Sometimes the employer will be keeping their payments for safe keepings in many cases The person might mention that they owe a debt that they're working to pay off. Mm -hmm. Another thing is people appearing overly fearful, distress, or even submissive behavior. Maybe they're frightened to talk to outsiders or people. They appear to be closely monitored or controlled by somebody else. Perhaps you try to talk to them and they avoid eye contact. Other situations could be lack of official identification. Uh, They don't have any passports, identification, or legal documents with them or at all. Uh, Substance abuse can be another issue, maybe showing signs of drug usage or drug addiction, lack of personal belongings. Oftentimes, uh, human trafficking victims may have few or no personal possessions with them. Um, They might be deceived by a false job offer. You might hear things like the actual job they applied for or they believe they were going to be working with is not the same job that they are with now. It was different than what was advertised. Controlled movement and trafficking victims are often transported to or from work where they live. There might be cases where somebody doesn't know the language at all. They might have recently arrived in the country and do not speak the language. They only know words that might be related to sex or labor-related words. Might be bad health or malnutrition. You might be looking at signs of denied food, 
water, sleep, or medical care. Could be signs of physical abuse, bruises, scars. There are more, but this is a good starting point if you were somewhere and you observe any of this to take note that maybe something is wrong. And even if it's not human trafficking and to observe that somebody might be in danger. You know, we all have discernment and we all have gut feelings. And oftentimes when we become aware of this, we might go into a situation and our gut might be telling us that something is Mm -hmm. wrong. And even if we don't have hard evidence that somebody might be trafficked, I still encourage everybody to report it or try to find out more information because you really might save somebody's life. Yeah. I'm glad that you said that last part too, because I think it's easy to think this could never happen near me sometimes. And really, like you said, it is a global problem that happens in every country. So anyone who lives in the planet Earth, unfortunately, might find themselves in a place where they are witnessing it and they may not even know it. I think it's really good to point out whenever you have that gut feeling just to be curious about it and and not just put it aside because it feels uncomfortable. So you have been working in this field for over a decade. I know with people, especially people who work in difficult fields, a lot of them will say, I have this one thing that keeps me going for a long time, even if it's hard. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything that, for you that just brings you a lot of hope and keeps you going and just re-inspires your passion daily for this? Yeah, of course, working with human trafficking, being such a complicated and global crime can be quite overwhelming and it can be very difficult, especially in a country in Cambodia where you see a lot of vulnerable situations and poverty and just overall challenges with gaining resources But what really helps me is honestly just all of the survivors that we have under our care and that I have seen progress. And even working with A21 for five years, five years ago, there was a lot of children that came under our care that were trafficked to different countries. They were entered into our care and they received services. And now I see them five years later thriving in the community, thriving in school, adults that have been repatriated back, reunited with their families, and now they have businesses or they've been married and they have children Mm -hmm. and they're living healthy lives. This is what continues to give me hope. In Seamreed, Cambodia, we operate what is called a child advocacy center. And the purpose of the center is to conduct interviews for children who are suspected to be exploited, trafficked, or abused. Mm -hmm. And Every week, we have the police bringing new children to that center where they're interviewed by our team who are trained in forensic interviewing. And so I am consistently reminded on a daily basis about the importance of not giving up hope. When I see these children being brought into the center and I look at their situations, and even just after they've been rescued and how overwhelmed or how they're dealing with the trauma that they had experienced, I know that what we are doing is so important. And it's hard for me to imagine doing anything else. I still have hope that we can end this issue. And I still believe that everything we do is all really for the one at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And if we can help one person today, that's really all worth it. Yeah. If I or someone else wanted to support the work that H21 is doing, what is the best way to do that? There are many different ways to get involved and to support the work of A21. And honestly, every action, big or small, is meaningful and ultimately necessary for us to actually try to end this. Number one, A21 has a series of videos about human trafficking scenarios and survivor stories available again on our website. I encourage everybody listening to this to watch them for yourself and also help to share them to your community to get the message out there about um, the reality of human trafficking and what people can do to get involved. Every year in October, we host a global event called Walk for Freedom. The Mm -hmm. purpose of the Walk for Freedom event is to raise awareness and again, empower the community. Last year, I think we had over 500 walks all around the world, over 50 countries. And so I think everybody listening to this can find a walk near you. And if you cannot find one, host one. (laughs) We (laughs) do 821 have resources to help empower people to set up their own walks or just to provide an opportunity for people to get involved. I also encourage you to educate your community. It doesn't matter if you work in education, business, or church, something completely different. Once you educate yourself about this issue, also help to educate your community, your families, your children. Another important one is if you ever suspect human trafficking, as we already mentioned, 
Learn how to recognize that it's happening and please make a report if you ever suspect it. Again, even if you're not sure, there's just been countless cases we have worked where somebody was hesitant to make a call. But once they did, we've seen people rescued or we've seen trafficking rings being shut down because of it. Hmm. Another way is to volunteer with us, mentioned already as well. We have offices all around the world or you can get your business involved to see how we can partner together. Another way to partner with us directly is to donate towards A21. We would not be able to help rescue or support survivors in Cambodia or in the USA if it was not for all the support and commitment from our donors. Honestly, we are so grateful for all the people all around the world who stand with us to combat human trafficking. But if we have any hope in ending this everywhere forever, then we really need everybody to do something. Yeah. Like I said before, we're just very grateful for you guys and your work and grateful that we get the opportunity to partner with you as Life Church and also just as individuals. Thank you so much for saying that and for all of your support and also for helping A21 to shine a light on this issue and empower people. We are so grateful for Life Church and everything you do to make our work possible. So is there any kind of final encouragement that you would have for people who are listening or maybe one thing that you most hope that they would take away from everything we've talked about today? Yeah, there are so many different ways that people can get involved. And I hope by listening to this, people feel inspired to know that no matter what they do, how little or how big, it all makes a difference. I know it's not a reality for everybody to move to Cambodia and take a full-time job with A21. (laughs) But there are so many different ways that people can get involved. Education is the difference between vulnerability and safety. That's a really great starting point for everybody listening to this to dive onto the A21 website, download resources, watch movies, educate yourself so that you can help to take action. And if you're wanting to get more involved, you can also see on our website, we have 21 ways for people to get involved. And that, yeah, that varies from volunteering to joining an event or fundraiser. But I just really encourage everybody, especially those who are feeling touched by this topic or learning about human trafficking, to really just start. And education is a great way to do that. And I'm so thankful for everybody listening to this who is already partnering with A21 or who are after this call going to take the first step to get involved because we really couldn't do this without you. Hey, it's Laura. Every person on this earth matters to God. First Timothy says that God desires for all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. So at Life Church, we support the work of reaching people around the world in four key areas, Bible translation, church-based community development, crisis relief, and church planting. We partner with several established organizations like A21, Tear Fund, Illuminations, and Compassion International, who share our passion and purpose to see people come to know Christ. If you would like to learn more about Life Church's global missions work and get monthly missions updates in your inbox, just visit life.church/missions/global. Man, I love everything that Kristen shared, and I really love how she did such a great job of breaking down what can feel like such a big and overwhelming issue and really turning it into some action steps that everybody can take action on. And she even mentioned this resource of 21 ways to get involved, and I think that's such an empowering way to get started. And so as I think about getting involved, um, Austin, you recently got to go on a trip to visit Kristen and some of the A21 team in Cambodia. And so I wondered if you could just share a little bit about what were the big takeaways from that experience? Yeah, it was an amazing experience getting to see their work in person. One of the highlights for me was really just getting to meet the A21 staff, the Mm. actual people who are doing this work on the ground. And there's an inside joke from the trip that I'll share with you. We just learned very quickly that there's such strong alignment with their team and our team in terms of vision and values and culture, which is always awesome to see in a partnership. And it became a joke because several times during the trip, their staff would be talking and sharing about what they're passionate about. And it was almost like they were quoting (laughs) Life Church's core values without even knowing it because they're also passionate about excellence and stewardship and generosity. So we're like, did they 
just like <laughs> steal this right off the life <laughs> church read the website walls. before. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So I loved that. And one other just really powerful thing we learned is that several of A21 staff are actually survivors of human trafficking themselves. Oh, wow. So they serve from such a deep personal passion to help other survivors experience a life of hope and dignity and independence like they have. Wow, that's really powerful. So we've heard a lot today from Kristen and then just from all of these experiences. And so as people listen, what do you hope that they do? Or how do you think they can even start talking about this episode? I think a great place to start, whether you're talking with your friends or your family or your life group, is just to address your initial reaction. Hearing all this, learning all this, what did you take away? And how does that make you feel about it? Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel about the issue of trafficking? And now, what action are you going to take? What do you feel called to go do now? Yeah, I love that because I think even personally, it can feel overwhelming to know what to do. But then when you talk about it with your life group, you might realize there's things you can all do together. And so you can start the conversation by just asking the big question as a group together. And that's just, what can we do to help victims of human trafficking? That's right. And for more resources, you can check out this week's conversation guide or visit www.life.church slash end trafficking. Thank you for joining us for this special episode of You've Heard It Said. If you'd like to learn more about how you can join the fight against human trafficking, visit www.life.church slash end trafficking. And check out the conversation guide for links to even more resources. Have a great week. <laughs>